Everybody to the June 1st, 2023 Board of Public Works and Safety meeting. Roll call, please. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Greenwell. Mr. Kalina. Here. Uh, is, are there any conflict of interest statements? No, sir. Okay. Approval of the minutes of the meeting of May 30th, 2023. I recommend deferring the approval of the minutes. And I will concur. Uh, number five, bid opening. Uh, demolitions of the following properties. 5627 Calumet Avenue, 6530 Carolina Avenue, 228 Condit Street, 4143 Holman Avenue, 1246 Indiana Street, 1463 Indianapolis Boulevard, 7147 Kennedy Avenue, 6624 Missouri Avenue, 7352 Nebraska Drive, 2831 Orchard Drive, 941 Reese Avenue, 1430 Stanton Avenue and 13 Warren Street. The uh, first bid is from Richardson's Disposal out of Gary, Indiana. We have the bid proposal, the Form 96. the non-collusion affidavit, and the bid bond. And their bid is $240,490. Does anybody need their? $240,490 is the first bid. And again, that's from Richardson Disposal. The second is from JM Industrial Services Incorporated out of Fair Oaks, Indiana. We have the bid proposal. The Form 96, the non-collusion affidavit, and the bid bond. And JM Industrial Services bid is $271,500. Again, that's $271,500. Moving on to the third and looks like last bid is Acton Contracting, LLC, out of East Chicago, Indiana. We have the bid proposal. The Form 96, the non-collusion affidavit, and the bid bond. And Acton Contracting's bid is $367,110. $367,110. Uh, good morning, Mr. President Board. I'd request that those be sent for ins to inspections for review and uh, tabulation. Okay, I recommend uh, approval of that, sending these to, to inspections for approval. And I concur. You good? Yes. Okay, um, anything moving on from matters from other department heads or their representatives, anybody? Okay, moving on to correspondence number seven, letter A, correspondence received from William Short, Chief of Police advising that Officer Derek Brummel Resigned from the Hammond Police Department effective May 29, 2023, and, and a disciplinary action taken. I recommend approval of Chief Short's request. And I concur. Uh, letter B, correspondence received from Milestone requesting road closure of JF Mahoney Drive from the Ice Cube facility to Parrish Avenue 
174th Street and 175th Street. Access to the ice cube will be from the north driveway entrance and access to the Gene Shepherd building and the park will be from 175th Street on or after June 5th, 2023 and will last approximately two months. Good morning, Good morning to Dean. the board. Good morning. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the second phase, really the, the last phase of um, JF Mahoney Drive reconstruction. It's two, two months. Obviously, it's going to be complicated getting into the Gene Shepherd. You have to come in from the north, basically from the church side. It'll all be well signed. It'll be very clear on how to get back there. Uh, we'll make notices for that. Um, and the ice cube, they will, they will be able to enter from the north now instead of having drive, to drive all the way around Parish. J.F. Mahoney Drive to get to their facility, and so we'd ask for your approval. Okay. okay. I recommend approval of Milestone's request. And I will concur. Thank you. Thank you. Um, letter C, correspondence received from Felix Gonzalez, Director of Public Works, requesting a dope dumping sign be placed behind Public Works. That's an easy one, Donnie. Yeah. yeah. I recommend Mr. Gonzalez's request. And I concur. Okay, moving on to letter D. Correspondence received from Milan Krasinski, Hammond Port Authority, informing that two professional firework shows have been contacted, or excuse me, contracted with the Mad Bomber and will be held on July 3rd, 2023, starting at 10 p.m. for the annual 3rd of July firework celebration and on July 22nd, 2023, at 10, 10 p.m. for the Hammond Marina Venetian Day and Night Festivities. Additionally, requesting notification to the Hammond Fire Department Inspection Bureau. I recommend approval of Mr. Kaczynski's uh, request. And I concur. Letter E, correspondence received from Calumet College of St. Joseph requesting permission to close Gaspar Avenue on July 27, 2023 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hold their annual pierogi 5K stumble. Yeah. I recommend approval of that also. I'll, and I will concur. Uh, moving on to letter F. Correspondence received from St. Casimir Church requesting permission to have traffic control on Sunday, June 11, 2023 from 145 to 330. I'm assuming that's PM uh, during their 17th annual Corpus Christi procession uh, with attached route. Yeah, we, that's an annual. You do that, you yeah, help them with that? that. I, I recommend approval of the request. Okay, I will concur. Okay, moving on to letter G. Correspondence received from Lisa Bringle, 4412 Pine Avenue to close the block of 4400 Pine to traffic on July 8th, 2023 from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. for a birthday party with signatures attached. And it looks like she has... Looks like she's only missing two, so she has the vast majority. So yes. I uh, recommend approval of Ms. Pringle's request. And I will concur. Letter H, correspondence received from Most Worship King Solomon Universal Grand Lodge, requesting street closings at the corner of Sibley Boulevard and Maywood Avenue to hold a friends and family cookout on Saturday, June 3rd, 2023. That's just that short block, right? It's between this yeah, I'm just trying to see. Yeah, state. Yeah, she really doesn't have better than that, so I'm going to say, yeah, uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, I make a recommend approval of the request. And I will concur. Letter I, correspondence received from Jose Rangel Fernandez requesting to block off street at 66, excuse me, 2649 163rd place, corner of 163rd place and Alexander Avenue to the alley for a family party on June 4th, 2023, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., no homes are restricted. Do not request a barricade either. Do, uh, do not, they no. just have an attached no. match, but no request for anything. Okay, I recommend uh, Ms. Fernandez's request. Uh, Mr. Oh, so Mr., sorry. That's okay, and I concur. Could I just request that um, from Board of Works, uh, I guess from Linda, that notice of any closures go that are done today go to uh, department heads and the mayor's office just so that and that would include fire and police obviously but gotcha. just so everybody knows okay thank you thank you sir um letter j correspondence received from cody benny hansen 
uh, requesting permission to park a semi-trailer in front of his home on Waveland and 169th from August 2nd, 2023 to August 5th, 2023 in order to move. Uh, to the board, I uh, reached out to Mr. Benny Hansen uh, to get clarification on this request. Uh, it seems that he has a 25-foot moving trailer with an 8-foot ramp that he it, that we've agreed that he would uh, place the uh, via the, the trailer on Waveland um, as far north as possible away from the 169th uh, stop bar um, uh, at the end of his driveway. And that, to me, based upon those uh, conditions of the vehicle, that seems very reasonable, and I'd support the gentleman's request. Okay. Okay. I recommend Mr. Hansen's request. Uh, I will concur. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, letter K, correspondence received from Controller's Office requesting the approval of the renewal of amusement devices license from Loyal Order of Moose, Lodge 570, and R.J. Cozy Incorporated. Recommend approval of the request for the renewals. And I concur. Um, moving on to letter L. Correspondence received requesting a rental reg registration hearing. I recommend a setting this for June 22nd, 2023. And I will concur. Letter M. Correspondence received from Reith Riley requesting lane restrictions on Columbia Avenue at Summer Street and Summer Street and State Street on June 5th and 6th, 2023. Additionally, requesting closure of the eastbound lanes on Summer Street from Columbia Avenue to Indianapolis Boulevard from June 8th, 2023 through June 25th, 2024. For the 1A Summer Street reconstruction project, project during this phase, westbound Summer Street would use the inside westbound lane and the eastbound traffic would use the outside westbound lane. Very complicated. <laughs> Uh, so there, there's basically three separate actions. Uh, and we're, we're grouping them all into this one particular action, but Reith Riley's made three separate requests. The first request is to do a lane restriction on Columbia Avenue at Summer Street to pothole and measure the diameter of the water pipe so that they can uh, order the correct fittings to make that. That's a two-day lane restriction. There'll be uh, one lane of traffic northbound on Columbia. Uh, and obviously both lanes of southbound Columbia will be open. So that's, that's the first one. The second one is uh, the, same, the same two days, June 5th and 6th, at uh, where, where Summer and State Street enter at Grant, where they sort of come together at Grant. Um, there are two concrete medians uh, that sort of separate the roadway going east and west. They're coming in there to, to take out the concrete medians and just put asphalt back in temporarily. So that's the second request. And the third and most difficult request is a one-year closure uh, of the eastbound lanes on Summer Street to do phase 1A of the, of the project, which is the, the whole south side of Summer Street between Columbia and I think we're going to, well, we're going all the way to the boulevard, but for the most part, it's to like White Oak. Um, it does say to the boulevard, so, so the whole south side. But there will be one lane of traffic open in each direction, and they'll occupy the westbound lane. So the, the right-hand westbound lane will be for westbound traffic. The left-hand westbound lane will be for eastbound traffic. Got it. Um, and then uh, notably, every other cross street will remain open throughout the, con uh, the, through the construction. I talked to Jack Smith at the Sanitary District. They have a, um, trying to remember where exactly. Don't they have a main there? They have a, 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 a collapse on Sherman okay. between, somewhere between Grant and Berkeley. Right? I think it's the next street to the east. Um, they, we, they will make sure that people can get in and out. Um, and I believe that's, I forget what the cross street is, but they'll make sure that people can get in and out based upon that work as well. Okay. So, uh, with all that being said, we'd ask for your approval of this request, and um, hopefully that will also get notified to their lane restrictions. It's not a complete closure, right, but right. hopefully uh, that will get notified as well. Okay. okay. Do you have any? uh, anything okay. else, sir? That's all. Thank you. I recommend approval for the lane restrictions. And I concur. Uh, thank, moving thank on you. to letter N, correspondence received from Infra, Enviro Forensics requesting advertising dates of June 8th. 2023 and June 15th, 2023, 
with an opening date of June 29, 2023, for the removal and replacement of lead impacted soil environmental remediation. This is phase three of the Robertsdale lead remediation project that the um, Hammond Common Council and the uh, and the Mayor Mayor McDermott has um, authorized set aside money for uh, through the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, so this is the third and final phase. And we're asking for uh, approval of advertising dates and obviously the bid opening date for uh, June 29th. Yeah. I recommend approval of the request. And I will concur. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dean. Letter O, uh, correspondence received from John Vesmar, Multimedia Coordinator, requesting the approval of the agreement with Media Temple. Um, this, uh, this agreement has been uh, reviewed. I met with IT. Uh, we sat down, I went through the legal part of it, they went through the practical part of it. This is uh, increased server capacity for the city. So uh, they've requested its approval and I would concur with that. Okay. Okay. I recommend approval of the request. And I concur. Uh, moving on to number eight, matters from board members. Do you have anything? No, sir. Okay, mo moving on to number nine, new business. Letter A, right of way permits received from engineering submitted for approval. Looks like we have three. Morning, Good Mr. morning. Gordish. How are you? Good. Good. All these are three NIPSCO ones throughout the city that they're going to replace the equipment and poles on three poles. So it shouldn't take a, it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. No traffic control or anything. Okay. So I recommend approval. Thank you. Okay. I recommend approval of the right-of-way permit. And I concur. Uh, moving on to letter B, request for proposals for EV partners submitted for approval. Uh, yes, um, this is a kind of a short timetable. The um, proposals are due uh, next Wednesday on the 7th. Uh, they will be, we will be reviewing those, uh, Dean and I will be, and we will be recommending uh, an, a, uh, an, I guess for lack of a better term, award uh, on the 8th, so next Thursday. So I'd request that this be approved so it can be put up on the City's website. I know that Ray Escamilla is ready to do that, and Linda is ready to do what she needs to do to get this out. So. Gotcha. Okay. okay. This has to do with um, electric vehicle charging stations. Yeah. Oh, okay. I recommend the approval. And I concur. Moving on to letter C: request for business license late fee appeal hearing submitted for approval. I recommend we set this for June fifteenth, twenty twenty-three. And I will concur. Letter D, garage sale permit submitted for approval. Two days. Two days. They're good. They're good. Yeah, I recommend approval of the garage sale permits. And I concur. Uh, letter E, disposal authorizations. Uh, received from the Hammond uh, Police Department. Yeah, I'll look through these real quick. Yeah. Okay, I recommend approval of the uh, uh, disposition disposal authorization. Sorry. And I concur. Letter F, Robertsdale access agreements received from 1232 121st Street. 1220 Lakeview Avenue, 1340 121st Street, and 1204 121st Street submitted for approval. Similar to other uh, weeks that we've had these before you, this goes to what Mr. Button was discussing regarding phase three. We'd request their approval as presented. Got it. Okay. I recommend approval of the request. And I concur. Uh, moving on to number 10, old business, letter A, notice of violation hearing 7235 through 41 Calumet Avenue. Um, this is up for status. You may recall this is the property that had um, four uh, residential units in it. Um, Mr. Golding is here representing the current owner. I believe Mr. Pipping is also on the Zoom maybe, I think. Um, and uh, this is currently in litigation between them of course, the city's concern is simply to uh, resolve uh, the, what we believe is a safety issue with the residences there. Right. Um, Mr. Golden reported to me, and I'm sure he'll report to the board, that he believes that situation has been alleviated because the current owner, who's 
who's here, his client, um, yeah, has removed everyone from those residences. Um, I believe a current issue uh, that Mr. Kearney may be able to speak to after Mr. Golding presents is that she is looking to place some commercial um, uh, folk or in entities in there to, uh, you know, properly, if it's properly zoned that way, et cetera, et cetera, so that she can use it for what she believes or we believe is its proper use. Gotcha. So I'll let Mr. Golding address the board and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Good, good morning. Good morning, sir. I was here at the, uh, the last meeting covering for Mr. Peterson and uh, the board was concerned about the safety aspect. Ms. Herrera reports to me this morning that the residential tenants have all moved out, so I think the residential safety issue is a non-issue at this point. Uh, she would just let, is working with uh, Mr. Peterson involving the lawsuit between her and the individual who sold her the building, and they are, um, uh, Mr. Peterson reports to me that they're going to be scheduling some inspections with experts to see how all of these issues with this building can be uh, resolved one way or another. But the safety issue, I believe, has been addressed, so uh, uh, I don't think we have that anymore. Um, she would like to, uh, you know, place a commercial tenant in there, uh, and uh, we would request, therefore, that the board continue this out for like 60 days so that we can, um, you know, address the uh, the, the ongoing issue of what needs to be done with this building to make it conform to all uh, all applicable ordinances. Yeah, we have no objection to the 60-day continuance as long as um, Ms. Herrera understands that there could be no uh, new residential occupancy of that building. That makes sense, yeah. And um, she's other... nodding yes, she agrees with okay. that. Okay. I, I understand that, yes. Okay, thank <laughs> Yeah, you. I okay. understand that. Okay. Yeah. So, but I'd like uh, maybe Mr. Kearney or Mr. Carroll can talk about what mm -hmm. needs to be done so that she can hopefully get a commercial uh, tenant in there if it's uh, it's a, it is a shop, a mechanical shop that Mechan was already Mechan running shop. in there. And I, all I want is some people to go in there and, and, do, and use it. So there will be so only can, one business? Only only one, yeah. But we tried to get the permit and they wouldn't give it to them. I don't know why, it's commercial. Yeah. Was there a, a business license inspection time for that? So the, the concern is at this point that that portion of the property is constructed as four separate residential units with an attached, like an in, uh, enclosed garage in between the middle of them, uh, off the rear of the property. That's not the one. Yes, so it's yes. like not the one. So what, one. What, we what we would request is that uh, the city code enforcement department have an opportunity to present um, our findings during the inspection and then present our, our case in front of the board so the board can make a ruling uh, on our findings and decisions. Um, you know, as we have presented here. I thought that today was going to be the hearing date because we haven't technically had a hearing on the property yet. Um, so it's been continuances to allow the owners uh, to decide, you know, who's going to deal with the issue with the land contract involved. However, our concern is the way in which it's being occupied, the lack of permits to account for the existence of residential units there, and then who, whoever's gonna be found responsible for the property, hire a licensed commercial contractor to submit plans on how they're gonna convert it back to a commercial use. So I'm a little bit less concerned about the, um, the violation, which we can deal with, I think, as we kind of move forward. I'm more concerned about like, hey, if, if an inspection's needed to get a commercial use in there, let's do that, let's see what we can do to help Mr. Herrera get a tenant in there, and then we can always deal with the, with the violations because the violations are a little bit involved with the litigation a bit. Absolutely, yeah. And so I don't want to unnecessarily delay the improvement of this property. So it's like, like what Nick said, right? Like there needs to be a look and see what needs to be changed from its current setup to what needs to get it to where we want it to be, which if it's owned properly, a commercial use. So if we can do that and we can help Mr. Rear out and then we can always deal with the violations, I think, at whatever time we need to deal with those. I just don't want to delay things unnecessarily. As for the commercial use now, I suggest you go to zoning, let them know what you want, intend to do, how the, yeah, what business you intend the, to do there, the, and then we'd have a business inspection done and make sure that we're going to be safe and doing it. Yeah, the, the mechanic was already working in there. It's a mechanic. It's, That's, it's, it's, we're no, not but, sure if, you, uh, if he should be working in there, doing what he is doing. That's one of the things uh, we're going to check as far as zoning. We can check it. Yeah. And, so, and see, it's, it's good for me too. I want to so make sure a, we... So you have a tenant? I don't commercial have tenant. You have no. a 
No, uh, there is a business. Yeah, it's empty. Okay. You're, a, you're a prospective okay. tenant, though, correct? Yes. Okay. yes. So, so, so I think the, yes. the, the best plan would be to yeah. schedule some kind of inspection, have, have zoning determine if it's zoned for exactly. what, what the proposed use is, and we'll move forward from there. Right. And Mr. Peterson is scheduling some inspections with experts, too, as part of this litigation. So let's get some inspections going yep. and see if this is legal, what, what they want to do, and, and try to move forward. So I'm trying to figure out what the best thing to do in that regard is. that. You submit to a, submit a business license application, Don. Is that? That's what I would do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Guys, is that? Who's only? Because that'll that'll help with inspections. Yeah, that's, that's fine. She has a she has a, a commercial tenant lined up. If he if they fill out the business license application and get submitted, then we go through that process of approval. So your tenant needs to do that. They You're came the here and they tried multiple times and they refused. Well, now it's gonna it's gonna be we're probably. kind of trying to move. Right. Yeah, so so that so, that uh, Mr. Smith's very good about these you. things. Yes. We'll we'll get yes. this taken thank care of. Thank you very much. And yes. I just want to, Nick, are you satisfied with kind of how we're going to move forward then? On this? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think thank we you, would like to just make her her, her the the best and probably most uh, like the quickest way she could probably move forward is to have a uh, contractor license <laughs> general contractor who will be able to walk through the property um, and lay out what he would need to do, what work he would need to do in order to have the property comply with the business operation. So you need to get, yeah, talk I to would, Mr. Peterson I, about that because he's going to have but, some. But she, would, she wouldn't want to do that, though, until she knows it's zoned properly, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Until Mr. Peterson's uh, inspectors come through mm -hmm. and get results, we work coordinate with them as far as what's going to be done and if it could be commercial or residential. But the application for, for the application by her prospective tenant will trigger the zoning review. Yes. Correct. So that right. needs to get done. Yeah. That's the very first thing you need to get done. So if we set this for 60 days, that's enough to figure out zoning, doing it, an inspection and all that stuff, correct? That's correct. Probably. Yeah. Okay. July 27th. Okay. July 27th at 9. We can do July 27th or August 3rd. You, which, which one? Make it August 3rd. August 3rd. Okay. Okay. And we appreciate your patience. She's you. trying to work through all oh, this. We, 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 want it, we hope she succeeds. So and thank you. we want to make this right. So. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank I you. recommend we set okay. this for status yes, for August 3rd, 2023. And I concur. OK, moving on to letter B. Uh, correspondence received from Reith Riley requesting road closure of Holman Avenue between Sibley Street and Russell Street beginning June 1st, 2023. <coughs> through August 11th, 2023, for the Holman Avenue reconstruction project. Thank you for hearing this action. Uh, so the, uh, the contractor uh, has requested a full closure of Holman Avenue between Sibley and Russell Street. <clears throat> we could keep two lanes of traffic open under the first phase, but there's no possible way to keep lanes of traffic open and construct the center median with angle parking and keep one lane of traffic open in both directions. I mean, it's just not possible. Um, so what, what happens is then Sibley, uh, and they'll open Sibley as quick as they can, but the, the east approach to Holman Avenue will be closed. The Fayette approach to Holman Avenue from the east side will also be closed. Russell will remain open, but as you know, it's dead-ended at the new Westlake corridor, right? So that's going to be open in uh, two directions. Uh, and Russell will, will be reopened completely through, because uh, right now, currently, Russell is closed from the west approach. Um, Munich Court remains closed. Uh, Rimbach will then be closed from the west, coming towards Holman Avenue, right? Because because Holman will be closed for the construction. And this will be through August 11th. Um, uh, earlier this week, I had an opportunity to meet with Mayor uh, and others and clarify the action that's being requested um, and mayor's given his approval for this uh, for this action to take place um, and uh, the expectation is that they will begin this change tomorrow even though it says June 1st they uh, they have some things they have to do between now and tomorrow morning to make the shift um, and so they're they're prepared to do that so I wouldn't change the action but just so that you're you're aware that starts uh, the, the official shift starts tomorrow. The, the good thing is that, um, so, for example, southbound Holman to westbound Sibley will be reopened, right? So that's going to reopen, which will make uh, will sort of alleviate the problem that the, the grocery store has, Strack and Van Til right. has, with their 
peculiar route to get through. But obviously, any, anybody coming northbound on home into downtown uh, would have to go to state line to get to, to Strax. Um, we've made uh, notifications to the businesses in the area, the, co the contractor and engineer have done that for us so that they're aware of what's going on. Engineering, uh, the department has, uh, has received numerous phone calls and we're working with the businesses to make sure that they're aware of the condition. And so we recognize that this is sort of a difficult situation, but really the only way to get this project done this year is to, is to do this closure. Um, as the board knows, this, this project started um, sort of late spring of, of, of last year, yeah. and we had some delays related to a labor, uh, a labor strike, um, and then we had a cement shortage, and so uh, what we thought we could get done last year didn't, and so uh, we're asking for the board's approval for this action. Okay. Okay. I recommend approval of Ruth Riley's request. Yeah. I will concur. Thank you. Thank you Moving on to letter C, request received from Montessori Children's Schoolhouse for a school zone sign to be placed on Waltham. So Street. this is in my court, um, and I regret that I haven't uh, finished my uh, action. It's in fact necessary, but we want to make sure we've got all the bases covered, Holman Avenue and Waltham. And so I just need to put a figure together uh, to make recommendation to this board. And, they, and to have Public Works install those signs. So it's, we, we've sort of been focusing on um, some, of the pri uh, some of the Hammond Public Schools on busy corridors, uh, like Edison School, for example, Hammond High School. We've sort of focused on the need for improving signage at right. those locations. Um, so I just, this one got overlooked and I apologize and, and we'll get right on it. Do we need to defer it then? Yeah, if you want to just a week or two. Yeah, if you want to just uh, let, give, let me give you an update in two weeks, okay. uh, we should all be done by then. Okay. June 15th? Yeah. Okay. I recommend we set this for June 15th for a status. And I concur. Thank you. Thank you. Letter D, uh, Golden Cuts Barbershop, 173rd in Columbia, requesting permission to temporarily use curbside parking in front of building for approximately two to three months in order to construct a parking lot for the business. Anybody here from Golden Cuts Barbershop? Over the weekend, Golden Cuts was uh, creating their parking lot, so we had to put up a stop work order. Um, they're going to have to go through zoning and make sure that they'll be able to use that south portion as a, as a parking lot. I can certainly understand their need for on-site parking, and I believe south of that, the residents are allowed to park on the street. Mm -hmm. I think if we have some yellow curb, but we can keep them away from the intersection itself. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to park there um, while people are getting a haircut. So I think there's only two seats in, in the barbershop, so it shouldn't be overly crowded. I think uh, the only other thing I noticed about the place, actually looks like a great paint job, but they, it looked like they had something going on like with chalk or like some sort of... That's what they care of, so we had to move from. Yeah, that's like a no-go in my was book. It, was it so. right? Was they painted it over. Right? They painted over it. Okay, that's good to hear as well. So, I mean, it sounds like great new business. I'm glad they're there, but... We just want them to you know, comply with all signage, and, and if the recommendation from Kelly is to, you know, they won't use a lot of the street, I think we should just delineate how many spots we're talking about um, for them. And Linda said something that Brian, did Brian refer it to Board of Works? Or it was referred? We wanted Brian's input. Okay. We wanted Brian's input. Okay. Right, because of the parking lot and the necessary number of spaces that would be needed for the business, I think everything that Kelly said uh, is, is spot on. My, so my point really, though, is that it's, it's a public street, right? And so you're allowed to park. I don't, I don't see anything, at least from my perspective, in the request that's, that says that they want to designate parking on the street for their business. But you're, it's similar to the situation that occurred up on the boulevard mm -hmm. up, up in Robertsdale, um, where the business said, I need parking in front of my building. And it's a public street. You can't prevent a resident from parking on the street that could potentially take a spot in front of this business. I you agree. Can't reserve it only for the business. I, but I think that's what they're implying. They might not be asking directly, but I think that's what they're implying. They're asking. They're implying that they want spots in front of their business. At least that's how I read it. So are they going to put a sign on the street saying that this this space in front of the business is for haircut haircutting between the hours of I mean, this is, they also have um, plenty of room on 173rd Street 
Um, towards the church. Or, yeah. yeah, towards the church, and there's a residence behind the actual barber shop. There's, there's several spots that they could use there also. Okay. And they have four parking spots in the back off the alley. Okay, so ultimately we're denying the request. That's the recommendation? Well, kind, I, of, I mean, kind of sort of, or are we? Well, it, it, their, their, their customers are free to park on the public street. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would. If yeah. they're not open, they're not open. Yeah, they got to find. Just let them know, like, look, they're not. We can't designate spots for you. However, the street is open for your customers parking as long as it doesn't cre doesn't create a nuisance and it doesn't create and you're not parking illegally. Okay. And Linda will make that notification to them with that news. Okay. Okay. I recommend approval of the request. And I and we're not approving their requests. We're no. uh, no. we're what are we what 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 should we do? How should this be worded? The request is that they've been given designated spots on the street. That would be that's right. So we're denying the request. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it needs to be clear to them that we're denying it. If their request, I don't think they're. I haven't seen the actual written request. If the written request is, we are asking for designated spots. We're my recommendation, along with I think Kelly needs, is we're denying. It. However, we are approving their ability, which is everyone's ability to park on this. They can use the street parking for their commercial purposes. Okay. You got that, Donnie? I think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, I we're going to reiterate this. We're going to uh, deny the request for the parking designated signs and that they can use the spots in front of business for parking for their customers. And I will concur. Okay, uh, moving on to letter E. Resident uh, Rachel Adam requesting a residential sign in front of her house. I haven't had a chance to look at, at this action. Uh, if you could refer to engineering so we could at least sort of see the condition. I understand that there are re re uh, residential parking only signs in this segment. I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. That won't take long. Um, but it's my understanding that she just wants one in front of her house to, to be clear that it's for resident parking. And yeah, it seems, was, seems reasonable. Yeah, there was a, a question a week ago or a week and a half ago that maybe 1,900, 2,000, and maybe even 1,800 have resident-only parking signs. Um, there was a question whether they should be there or not. So maybe that's something you can check also. But I do know that uh, Chief Smith, Fire Department uh, Chief Smith, said that there's a lot of uh, traffic now due to the down that apartment building that got built, Notre Dame there. So that, that might be a problem. So I don't know if you want to check all three of those blocks, if you could. So, so 1900, the concern is the concern then that people living in the apartment building or parking on the street? All the business around there, but yes, yes, yes that all, that's, that true, that's yes. true also. That because of all the downtown traffic, they're parking on those streets. That's why the resident-only parking signs were put up. I just don't know if they were supposed to be put up or not. And why she needs one directly in front of her house if they're all along the street. I don't understand that part either. It's kind of the same thing. Like, we're not going to designate a spot just for her. That's what I'm saying. I kind so of agree with you. at the same you. time, we have a process for resident-only parking, right? And so if, it's, if it is uh, important enough to have on that street because of commercial, a lot of times it exists around commercial areas where you have run over commercial parking. Like, let's say 173 in Columbia, the barber shop all of a sudden has 50 cars every day. We're probably going to tell the residents that, you know, there'll be somebody that comes in and says, hey, I live on Columbia in the 7300 block, 7400 block, and I got barber shop cars down. Place to right? park, yeah. So, yeah, that's usually the, the situation. I guess, number one, like you know, President Long mentioned, can we look at whether or not this was why they were initially put in on these other blocks and then whether or not it needs to be expanded based on <coughs> I know what you're saying basically like well what's going to stop somebody in the apartment apartment is a resident yeah somebody in the apartment should have every right to park on the street just like if they're a resident yeah I mean I am a resident it says resident only parking I'm parking here because I live here unless we're going to do and stickers and that's a whole other yeah oh, yeah which I don't want to get involved oh. in if we don't have to no. um but if you could just check, Dean, those three blocks, see if they do have the signs and if they're supposed to be there, and then what your recommendation is after that, that I would appreciate. Okay. Okay. So status for the 15th, sir? Sure. Okay. I Thank recommend uh, setting this, referring this to engineering and setting the status date for June 15th. And I will concur. Okay, moving on, number 11, rental registration hearings. Uh, we'll start with 1311 Lakeview Avenue. It looks like there's two. 
Come on up, ma'am. I am here um, representing my son. Could you give us your name, please? Lisa Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. Okay. And his son is Anthony Lowe, okay. A.D. Lowe, Jr. And um, that's the address. He has an apartment building there with two, um, it's two units. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I came, I went up, came up here to register for um, the, um, the registration for the building. And I think they said we were a couple of days too late, so because the guy that he bought it from is not very good with communication, so he didn't let us know, and we didn't know about the dates. This is his first building. Okay. So we have him listed as the owner as of uh, 7 14 of 22. This is a two unit uh, with one of the units being occupied by the owner, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, it looks like we're here for uh, one rental unit registration for 2023. Uh, the only other thing that I would request is that the owner uh, fill out the homestead um, adjustment form as there's a full homestead being claimed on this two unit property. The fact that he occupies one of the units does entitle him to a partial homestead. So we would just ask that uh, he complete the highlighted areas and then have this returned to us uh, so we can have it filed with Lake County. As it is stipulated that uh, a portion of the property is uh, not eligible for the homestead tax exemption, but his unit is. So we would just request that the owner uh, finish that application sure. with the highlighted areas and get that back to us so we can file it appropriately. Okay. Other than that, this is uh, his first time as uh, the owner of the two unit property. Okay, okay. first time you said? I concur. So I want to make a general statement to everybody that's here. Uh, so every year you have from January 1st to April 15th to register. So everybody has that in mind. Whatever decision we make today, if you wish to wait till the meeting's over, you can take a copy. Linda's going to get a copy. You could take it downstairs and register if you'd like. You don't have to. You have 60 days, but that's up to you if you want to. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody knows those things before we move forward. It's 30. Okay, 30 days. Sorry about that. 30 days. Um, so, ma'am, you can you can stay till after the meeting's over and register if you'd like to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to letter B, 905 State Street. Looks like there's three of them. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Could you give us your name, please? Miguel Franco. Okay. Just explain to them why um, why you missed uh, this current year for the rental. Uh, the, the thing is that I'm doing some renovation. Uh, back to the prior of last year, I had uh, evict, evicted some people out of there, which left some damages. And um, well, I need some more extra time in order to finish up. So it uh, looks like we have Mr. Frankel, this is the owner of the property since 98. Uh, this is a three unit with one of the units mm -hmm. Occupied 2008. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 1998. Like you, you've owned the property. That was my father. Okay. He transferred it to me. Right. Right. Yeah, and that's fine. It's just I, I'm giving them a, a history of the property. That's all. Okay. okay. Um, so it looks like we have a three unit. Now you occupy one of the apartments, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, it looks like we failed to register uh, the two rental units for 2023. Uh, the property has been registered on time in previous years. So other than that, so just two rental units, um, and then, yeah, it's been, it's been registered on time since the ownership of the property. Can, Nick, can we just clarify the two units, you, you said renovation, were they in fact being rented for this year? No. Nobody was in the two apartments this year? No. That's what the part I was, I was meant. Yeah, if, um, I mean, we'd have to verify the requirements issued. Now, Does technically, um, he, should we make any repairs or remodeling to any of the units other than his own? Um, so I mean, we can verify that the um, occupancy, when you have a three unit, when they're on the same property and one water meter, it's hard to differentiate between what's um, you know, a singular individual's use 
versus maybe a tenant for a couple months or you know something like that. So okay, but, but you intend to rent it out at some point this year, correct? Yes. Okay. Right. I need some uh, some income in order to continue on. Okay, that's good enough for us. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I recommend that we waive the late fee for two units. And I will concur. Thank you, sir. We waive the late fees. You can register at the end of today's meeting if you'd like, okay? Okay. Moving on to letter C, 6148 McCook. 6148 McCook, anybody here? Thank you. So this would be under Mr. Evans. It looks like they have a California address. Um, we, Ms. McCook, uh, he's the only owner of record and, okay, fantastic. All right, Mr. Evans, if you'd like, the board is listening. So it looks like we have a 6148 McCook. Uh, Mr. Evans is the only owner of record. This is a single family home. Um, we are here for 2022 and 23. Um, the only other time there was any issues was previously in, uh, in 2015, there was a hearing where the board waived the late fee for the missing the 2014 rental registration. Other than that, it's been registered on time uh, each year. Okay, Mr. Evans, can you hear me? Okay, keep in mind that we usually only extend the courtesy of waiving the late fee one time. Uh, because the last time was nine years ago, I'm inclined to do it again, but you have to make sure that this doesn't happen again going forward. Okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay, I recommend you waive the late fees for 2022 and 2023. And I concur. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Yes. Nick. Yeah. So um, the check that was sent this year would have been returned. So this finding and decisions today includes both 2022 and 23. So uh, once you receive the finding and decisions, you'll be, or you can send in the, um, a rental registration form completely filled out for 22 and 23, and then a, a check payment of $10, and we can process both the years. Yes, yeah, you just have to make sure that we receive it within 30 days from today's date. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, moving on to letter D, 7739 Bertram Avenue. 7739 Bertram Avenue, Ms. Cordero. Okay, good morning. Can you please let us, sorry, let us know what happened last year? So uh, 7739 Bertram, uh, we have Ms. Cordero as the owner, uh, uh, April 19th, 21. This is a single family home. Um, we're here for 2022 and it was registered on time for 2021. Okay, Ms. Cordero, I'm sure you probably have heard what I've said a couple of times already, but just make sure that this uh, doesn't happen again, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Can I recommend a waiving of the late fees? And I will concur. Thank you, Ms. Cordero. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on to letter E, 4344 Torrance Avenue. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Lupe Garcia. Um, I actually own the uh, 4344 Torrance and the F6634 Harrison. Um, I just simply forgot to register the uh, units this year. Um, just hit my mind. <laughs> Okay. Uh, 4344 Torrance, um, we have Melissa as the owner since July 1st, 
July 1st of 2020. It's a single family home. Um, we're here for 2023 and on time uh, since he's taken ownership. And then the Harrison property is a two unit. Uh, owner as February 28th of 20. Um, and we were here for 2023 as well, uh, registered previously. So both properties are for 2023. Um, after taking ownership, you registered uh, previously for the two years and then um, just missed this, uh, was late this current year. Okay, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna act on both at the same times. Letter E is 4344 Torrance Avenue and letter F 6634 Harrison Avenue. And I will concur. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to letter G, 905 Merrill. There's two, looks like. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, my name is Sita Chatterjee, and I don't have much any excuse. I thought I mailed it, and then I found the check just a few days after with the whole paperwork somewhere in my house. Started a new job, so I'm a little more scattered. And uh, that's all the excuse I have. <laughs> I found it, I mailed it two days late, and they sent it back to me. Well, I can't tell you how many checks I found that I thought I mailed, I didn't, <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. 905 Merrill is a two unit property, uh, listed as the owner May 23rd, 2015. Um, this is the first time we have it showing that it was late. Yes. Okay. That's good. Enough. Okay. I recommend that we wait late for the final five minutes. Thank and I you. I concur. Thank you, you ma'am. Uh, yeah, 4610 Pine. 4610 Pine. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Um, so I'm Nancy. I own this building. Last year, I have no excuse. Uh, basically, I had a transportational issue, and I remember thinking that I needed to mail my registration, and apparently I did not. And when I came in this year, I was told that I had missed last year. So I apologize. And that's what's going on. satisfied with that now? Yes, sir. Okay. So three units for two years? Yes, sir. Okay. No problems before you said? No. Okay. All right. I recommend uh, waiving the late fee for all three units, 4610 fine. And uh, I concur. And thank, thank you, you ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, the meeting's open to the public. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Okay, Donnie. Okay. I recommend that we uh, meeting adjourned. And I concur. Thank you, everyone. Everybody.